Podcast. It's one of the things I enjoy the most about my job. I stayed in a lot of opulent hotels in my time. Boarding a flight into a faraway city and checking into a hotel with gold accents, butlers, and lavish pools. The moment you enter the hotel, you're struck by its grandeur and the attention to even the slightest details. Your every wish will be granted. I believe that I've seen the greatest of the best for a while. In France and Switzerland, I unwinded in spa hotels while sipping a martini and gazing out over their versions of Central Park. Before my visit, I believed I'd ticked off every box. Dubai's Burj Al Arab, also historically referred to as the only 7-star hotel globally, has been regarded as the best hotel in the world. It blew my mind. It questioned my preconceived notions of luxury. It was a life-altering event. And guess what? I'm going on a walk with you today. We're going to discuss the gold, the glitter, the sparse, the caviar, and everything in between through the world's only 7-star hotel. The Burj Al Arab has been open since 1999. Therefore, it's surprising that I haven't visited it sooner. Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Sheikh of Dubai, ordered the hotel's construction, which is thought to have cost $1 billion. Why would they invest $1 billion to construct a posh hotel? A large portion of his administration has been concentrated on diversifying the economy and making it a luxurious destination for millionaires from over the world, mainly because he realized he had to place but on the map for anything other than oil. And based on how frequently I've traveled the city with pals, I think it's effective. In 1994, work on the enormous structure began. The Arabic Tower is the name's direct translation, making it a very literal term. The hotel rises 920 feet above the city. An artificial island created just for it gives the impression that a ship's sail is growing out of the water. There are 250 concrete columns under this intricate piece of construction to support it. You won't have any worries about your stay there thanks to the structure and the island, which are 148 feet under the ocean's surface. There are two methods to get to the island and start your opulent getaway. A complimentary Rolls Royce is an option for the airport, which is what I chose to do. However, you can fly your private helicopter to the hotel's top level helipad for a more extravagant and exclusive entry. You'll get there in paradise either way. As you enter the hotel, the foyer is actually quite the scene. Warm hues, patterns, and textures bound throughout the lobby areas. A large stone cascade fountain behind the check-in desk uses water mist and fiber optic lighting resulting in a stage performance where the water leaps down and across. There are gold columns, features, and furnishings on the steps, so you'll have to get used to them. The hotel employs 20,000 square feet, nearly half an acre, or gold leaf for ornamentation. Stautario marble, the most expensive marble on earth and the type used by Michelangelo, is utilized for the floors throughout the lobby of the hotel. Even though the foyer is opulent, the actual action doesn't happen there. When you check in, a staff member will escort you to another lovely side room where they will greet you and provide you with cold towels, rose water, coffee, and snacks to enjoy while they process your check-in. They will yeet you up a sluggish escalator next to a giant aquarium in the hotel, one of the three. You will then enter the atrium, the most enormous atrium in the world, which is an astounding 590 feet tall. A fountain that pours water 130 feet into the air, the same height as the Bellagio fountain, is located in the center of the square. Through the golden elevator doors, you go and ascend to your chamber. The hotel has 202 rooms, including some opulent suites. The cheapest room is $2,700 per night, but we'll discuss those later. I have to admit, I wonder if it's worth it. When you enter the floors, a butler will assist you selling in. That's correct, each floor has its own butler. And according to reports, the hotel has a 6 to 1 employee to guest ratio. And I believe it. The butlers are renowned for being able to assist you with anything you require, and that assistance starts the moment you enter the room. The butler unpacks, hangs your things, and gives you a thorough tour of the suite. It should even be noted that the cheapest room requires a thorough tour from the butler, which takes some time. This hotel's two-story suite, the dining area, living room, and an extensive mini bar with an enormous selection of drinks can all be found on the ground floor. A selection of premium chocolates, including some freshly created macaroons, are on the dining room table. The blinds, the television, the lights, and the temperature control are all controlled by one remote in the suite. To reach the bedroom and bathroom, you must ascend a marble staircase covered in fresh rose petals. The bedroom is also huge. The mattress feels expensive and costs actually $15,000, to say the least. I don't sleep the same now that I was there, and all the other beds are nothing in comparison. Eider down feathers, and the harvested from female eider's nests, are used to make cushions and blankets. It's challenging to find that more Lamborghinis are produced annually than duvets filled with eider down feathers because they're native to the subarctic. You may be rest assured that your blankets will keep you toasty all night. 
Additionally, there is a menu of over 17 pillows, which you can select the ideal one in terms of size, shape, and thickness. You may also use the bedroom for other things. The bedroom is connected to a luxurious sitting area, and there is a mirror just above the bed for no particular reason. The bathroom contains a jacuzzi bathtub, rain shower with four separate shower heads and gold hues. You all enjoy the shampoos and soaps in hotels. The Burj Al Arab goes above and beyond. A Hermes toiletries bag with his and her perfumes is provided in each room and that, my friends, is only the most basic accommodation. The most opulent room will cost you a lot more. To be precise, a thousand dollars more per night. The suite has two bedrooms and is decorated with luxurious leopard print stairs that lead up to a magnificent room that glistens with gold marble. There's a private dining area with 12 friends worth of seating, a fully equipped movie theater, a Malji style sitting area, and sweeping ocean views are all included. The bedroom looks like it belongs in an Arabian fairy tale, I'd say, and the enormous bed moves around in the space. Of course, the best feature of the most costly suite is not just the furniture. You can use a 24 karat gold iPad provided in the room while you're there, a personal butler who is on call around the clock, as well as a private elevator to access all the floors, there are 9 restaurants nearby if you don't feel like ordering room service while you're there, a variety of restaurants to pick from, actually. Although 3 of the restaurants provide buffet-style dining, the cuisine is not inexpensive. For instance, meals at the Asian fusion restaurant John Sway starts at $142 per person. At 8 different cooking stations, 25 chefs prepare gourmet buffet-style meals in front of the visitors while a sea of Swarovski crystals hang from the ceiling. There's also Scape, which offers some reasonably priced food and serves California-style cuisine poolside, although every restaurant is a 5-star establishment, one stands out. The signature restaurant is called Al Mahara. It offers outstanding local seafood prepared by Michelin starred chef Nathan Outlaw. Practically every dish is garnished with caviar or truffles. And even the complimentary appetizer includes exquisitely rendered smoked salmon butter. The restaurant's main courses, such as salt baked fish, cost more than $200. This fine meal takes place in one of the most extraordinary dining rooms on earth. Beautiful coral fish and plants are displayed around the tables in a 260,000 gallon aquarium. The area feels even more opulent thanks to the high golden ceilings that reflect light. Take the gold and turquoise elevator up to the appropriately titled Gold on 27 if you'd rather have a drink rather than the food. The bar and lounge offer breathtaking views of Dubai and, as if you need another reminder of how pricey the space is, is completely decked out in gold chandeliers and crystal that hang from the ceiling. The hotel has numerous pools, most of which are on the terrace, an infinity pool is surrounded by a beach area and a 108,000 square foot recreation area. Pool fades into the ocean and the horizon to create a truly resort experience. Furthermore, there are 24 8 regal cabanas suited for a king or cabanas. The royal cabanas have a fresh fruit and a complete bar, a restaurant menu, butler service, and air conditioning. I've always enjoyed honeydew, but if you insisted to take a bath indoors, the spa is the best choice. There are separate spaces for men and women at the 18th floor Talese Gym and Spa. There's also a massage area, a nice cold plunge pool, a steam room, and a sauna with glass windows that look out over the ocean. To mirror the tranquil mood, blue and green mosaic tile is used on the infinity pool. The pool can be leased for a private moonlight swim, guaranteeing you and your companion the entire facility to yourselves, champagne, strawberries on the side, and rose petals in the water. There are countless things to do and see and eat at the Burj Al Arab, and I have to say that I absolutely consider the experience to be a 7 star one. How do you feel? Is the hotel pricey or not? What modifications would you make to improve it? Please let me know in the comment box below if you enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe!